by default in a Flutter application, the state is not persisted, meaning when you use the setState method, after a hard refresh or the user closes and reopens the app, the state will be refreshed. In the counter example, you can imagine the state as the count. It starts at 0, and as the user clicks it, it increments. If the user gets to 10, closes the app, and reopens the app, that resets back to 0. There are many ways to persist the state. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the shared preferences package to persist the state. The first thing you want to do is add the package to the dependencies inside of pubspec.yaml. Be sure you grab the most current version, or you can use the one I am using. Next jump into main.dart. This is the only file that we're going to be editing. Go ahead and import that package. Now if I scroll through this, you'll notice it looks exactly like the demo app. You can go ahead and clean it up by removing any comments if you'd like, but I'm going to keep everything as it is. If you navigate to the my homepage state class, you'll notice we are declaring int counter to zero. Following that, we are calling an increment counter method where we are setting the state and incrementing the count variable by one. That is being called down below. We want to override this method to use shared preferences. The first thing we want to do is comment all of this out. Next, right below, we can create a future variable with type shared preferences. We'll name that underscore prefs and we'll set that to shared preferences get instance. We can then declare another variable counter, but instead of type int, we're going to declare this type late future int. And that is because we're going to be using async, so we need to use the future. Next, create a method with a return type of void. This will also be future because we will be using, as you can see, the async keyword. We will name that increment counter, which is the same name as we had before. Inside of here, declare a variable prefs of type shared preferences. And that will simply grab our variable prefs that we declared before. Remember, that is the future shared preferences variable. We are declaring an int counter. We are using the getInt method off of our shared preferences variable to grab the counter key. If we have that, that's great. If we don't, we can set it to zero. That is being done by using the double question mark. And then regardless of if we have it or if we have to set it to zero, we're incrementing the count, so add one. Now we can call the setState method, so we can actually update that in the UI. Inside of here, we'll use our underscore counter variable and using the setInt method, again off of our shared preferences object, we can set that to the counter shared preferences value. Then on a success, we will return the counter. Now this variable underscore counter should have the value of the count. Let's declare our init state method. We'll call state, And below here, we will set our variable counter to the correct count. Now inside of the actual UI, let's comment out what we have so far. Now below here, let's create our own implementation. First, we will set the child to a future builder of type int. Again, type int because that is the value of the count and future builder because we don't know what it is yet and we're going to have to use async. We'll set the future to the variable counter, which is declared up above. We'll set the builder to build context context. We'll give it an async snapshot of type int. And inside of here, we're gonna create a switch statement with the connection state. The first case we're going to use is the waiting connection state. If we are waiting, let's go ahead and return the circular progress indicator. Next, we'll jump into the default case. If we have an error, let's display that to the user. Else, we can simply return a column, we'll align everything to the center, and we can display the value of the count. We'll have two text. First is just a simple string. Second, we have a text with the data. And we can grab the data using snapshot.data, not using underscore counter. And with that, we should be able to go up here, refresh our app. 
And if I jump into my simulator right here, you see we are at 44. If I increment it, we go to 45. I can increment it again to go to 46. And if I come back here, refresh the state again, you say we still get 46. That is all for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this.